All right, guys, we're going to go through our essentials on this quick check version one here. And again, these are the biggies that we need to know. Uh, we want everybody to know by the end of the year, uh, the big essentials that all the teachers next year will be expecting every student to know. So let's jump in here and again, really be focused on some of the things uh, that, you, that you missed when you took the, when you took the quiz and, and can we fix where our thinking was off. Okay, so the first part we have to number one, plot these rational numbers on the number line. Remember rational numbers are any numbers that can be fractions. Okay, so all of these are those, so we should be able to graph those. So the first one, one and a half, again starting at zero. Uh, notice I have them marked by one force, two force, three force, and four force would make one, so we've got them uh, divided in there. If we put three ticks, we've got uh, this divided into four equal parts or fourths. Okay, so one and a half. I go over one, starting at zero, and I go halfway. Yeah, and make sure you fill in the plot there. And again, if you want to label it, one and a half. I know that's one and two fourths also. Again, one fourth, two fourths is half, so I know it's in the right spot. Okay, negative two and one fourth. Okay, again, start at zero. We got to go, everything works opposite, going to the negatives. So negative one, negative two, and then I need to go one fourth more away from zero. Remember, it's getting smaller. Some people like to come back this way because that's the way it works on the whole number side. Remember, everything's opposite. So negative two and then negative two and one fourth would be right there, getting closer to negative three. Zero, sample one, again, fill it in with your dot. And then negative uh, three fourths, again, starting at zero, negative one fourth, negative two fourths, negative three fourths, and negative three fourths. If I went again, that'd be negative four fourths, which we know is negative one. Again, so it should be very close to negative one there. We've got our four points. Uh, labeled. Uh, number two, we're going to plot each number and it's opposite. Okay, remember the opposite uh, is always the opposite of two would be like negative two. Okay, so the same distance from zero on those opposites. So let's actually start with the middle one here. Plot each number and its opposite. So there's three. And I'd all, I would also know to plot negative three. Each number and its opposite. Okay, because they're both the same distance from zero. They're both three away. Okay, uh, this one will save till the end here. Let's go to negative three-fourths. So if we're at zero, here's negative one-fourth, negative two-fourths, negative three-fourths. There's my negative three-fourths. And then its opposite would be three-fourths, one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. Again, you see that they're the same distance from zero, which makes them opposites. Okay, this one can seem kind of confusing at times. It's a negative of a negative two. All right, so basically it just means the opposite of a negative two. All right, so we know negative two inside parentheses, you do parentheses first, but there's nothing to do there. There's no operation. So that's just negative two. This means take the opposite of that. Okay, so the opposite of negative two is a positive two. Okay, so there's my positive two. And then I also have to do the opposite, which would be negative two. All right, but really this one is a positive two is what we need to know because it's negative, but then if I do the opposite, that turns it positive, and then I'm supposed to do its opposite as well, which would be the negative two. So a little more, a little more advanced there with those parentheses in there, okay? All right, so again, making sure you're getting these written down uh, for study guides to have on things that, that we all should be able to do with graphing uh, some of these rational numbers and, and their opposites and negatives. Okay, so again, pause the video if you need to, like normal. And we'll keep rolling now. So if we look um, up into here, now we're going to do plotting them. And the reason we did the rational numbers before is because we need to do it on a coordinate get it's a grid to start graphing things uh, in algebra. And you'll do this a lot in the future. So we're just going to plot these points. Okay, so point A there is coordinate negative 4, 4. Remember, we always start in the middle at 0, 0, the origin. Okay, so I'm going to start right in the middle. Remember, this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. We go counterclockwise here. Okay, so point A, uh, negative 4, 4. So remember, we always start on the x-axis first. Then we go up and down. Okay, that's the y-axis. We do the x first. Okay, so if I start here, I go over negative 4, up 4, Put my point there, and again, we'll just call that point A in this case, because it's A. Okay, on B is the coordinate 4, negative 4. So this time I go over a positive 4, and negative 4 means to go down. 
So I'm down four, and there would be uh, where B is at. Okay, the next one, uh, C is negative four and a half, negative four. So you're going to start at the origin, negative four, and then go a half further towards negative five. So negative four and a half, and then down negative four would be right here. So again, it's down negative, or over negative four and a half, so I'm going to be halfway there, then down. So I actually end up in the middle right there for point C, and then D, um, in this case, is 4.252, so over 4. Now, 0.25 we know is 1 fourth, so it's a little bit past 4, and then up to, going to be somewhere, somewhere around there, and D, and it looks like um, they're all four in different uh, quadrants, right? Quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so again, making sure you have these written down, we'll flip over and take a look at the back side of your essentials. But this whole front page had to do with um, graphing things that we're going to do a lot of in algebra in the future. So graphing on the coordinate grid here. All right, moving on. All right, so our next essential here. We need to be able to find some area or find the area of some more complex figures. Okay, so this one. Uh, it's not just a rectangle and things like we've done in the past or triangles. It's kind of a combination. All right, so we can break these into parts of this complex shape. So when I look at this, I can see the rectangle here, and we know we find length times width. Well, this one is 7 by 5. So length times width, 7 times 5. I know there's 35 square centimeters in there because we know a rectangle. Again, area is length times width. For a triangle, we know the area is half the base times the height. Okay, the formula is half that base uh, times the height. All right, so basically, we, when we learn this, we know that technically a tri this triangle, if we drew this in here, is just half of this rectangle. That's why with the formula, we get half of it. Some people think length times width and then divide it by two, or and that then dividing by two does cut it in half. So there's different ways you can look at this formula. Okay, some might say base times height divided by two. Okay, and in triangles we call that bottom, we call that the base. We don't call it the length and the width anymore. But there's your base and there's your height. Okay, which formed at that right angle, base and the height. So if I'm following this formula, I know the base is four. So this is four, and the height is five. So 4 times 5 is 20, but remember, that would be like length times width. That finds the whole rectangle, and we get this half. Now we take it times a half or cut it in half. So half of 20 would be 10. So I know in here there's going to be 10 square centimeters inside that rectangle of area because it would be half of this, which would be 20. So again, sometimes I like to draw that in so I remember uh, that that's why we cut it in half because some kids forget to do that, cut it in half, okay? All right, so the total then for this whole thing, 35 plus 10, we would have 45 square centimeters. Remember, you got to put the little two after the centimeters. Move this over, it's kind of in the, in the way of the light here on the video. So 45 square centimeters. Remember, the little two means the little squares, the number of squares that would fit in here. Okay, so it's not the 45 that's squared, it's the square centimeters that tells us that that's the number of little squares that fit in there. Okay, so again, area, another big thing that's an essential that we can find of some complex weird shapes by dividing them up into shapes that we understand better. Okay, again, uh, let's move to number five. Identify the expressions that are equivalent. So now we're into some of our algebra essentials. Uh, remember, we need to combine like terms. Okay, and we want to know every one that would be the same as three x's uh, plus four y's. Okay, so if I look at this one, x plus x plus x, that's three x's, plus y plus four. Now remember, we can only combine x's with x's and y's with y's and numbers with numbers. So this, some people might think this is four y, but you can't combine the y plus the four because we don't know what y is. Okay, so actually a uh, does not work. That's not an example uh, that shows that's equivalent to that. When you look at C here, let's move over here, y plus y plus y plus y, let's combine those like ter terms, that is 4y's, 
and then plus x plus x plus x. Well, if I combine those, don't I have three x's? So four of those y's plus three x's, that definitely would be uh, equivalent. Down on b, again, combine your x's. x plus 2x, well, that gives me three x's. And then y plus 3y, that would give me four y's. One y plus three y is four y's. Again, when I combine everything into simpler form, that is exactly the same as this, too. On D, I already know if I have five X's, I'm not taking away any other X's. There are no other X's to combine with. So I already know this one's wrong, okay? So B and C are your two correct ones there. And again, in algebra, you're gonna to wanna to be able to combine like terms, get them in this simpler form when you start to solve and try to figure out what X and Y are. You gotta to wanna to get them in simpler forms, okay? To do that, it makes it easier, so. Again, we're going to move up and look at the last couple here, so make sure you've got this written down and pause the video if you need to. All right, move.